Hi Hazel, so uh, your dad said that you wanted to know how I painted my miniatures. Well, I decided to do this like an actual uh, lesson uh, in case when you get a little bit older and, uh, and you want to do this, you can follow along with it. So um, I usually get Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. This is from WizKids Dungeons and Dragons, and this is a young black dragon. And I'm using paints from the Army Painter Dungeons and Dragons official paint line. Uh, I have two paint sets, the Adventures paint set and the Monsters paint set. Paint sets are a really great way to start. I also have a wet palette. This is just a little plastic box. When you open it up, as you can see, I already have some paints on it. But this is a piece of paper, a special type of paper that's damp, and underneath it is a wet sponge. And what this does is it keeps your um, paints nice and wet so that you can more easily use them. I also have a massive variety of brushes. We're going to probably be using the smaller tipped ones as we paint. I also have a little cup of water to rinse my brushes off as well as a sponge, a damp sponge. I also have a little vial with a dropper so that I can add this to my paints, a little drop of water at a time. And I'll explain why I add water to my paints in a minute. And of course, paper towels. Always good to have paper towels. Uh, the colors I'm going to use today are, well, over the next several days, I usually don't paint the full thing in one day. So we have Abyssal Black, Lawful White, Mithril Silver, Orc Skin, Skeleton Bone, Feywild Emerald, Green Flame, uh, Otug Brown, Black Wash, and Brown Wash. Now, what is Otug Brown? Otug, that's an Otug. Terrifying Beastie. That, actually, that looks like it might be fun to paint too. So, anyway. Uh, there's a reason for all of the different colors that we're going to use and I will get to that here in a moment. This is what we're going to be painting and this is why I chose so many different colors. As you can see, he's not just black. There's some green in there, there's some tannish color in there, there's some uh, bone color in there and that's why, we, that's why I pulled out so many different colors to get this started with. I have him out of his packaging and on my tracing table uh, with a lamp up above because I like to be able to see as well as possible. The more light the better. Okay, so first I just want to show you this. I'm taking orc skin and I am shaking it. I'm putting the drop right there. I am not done yet though. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to dilute it with some water. The reason you dilute it with water is so that um, it applies much more smoothly and it um, prevents you from having uh, brush marks. Alright, so I mix in the water and it was about one one on that mixture. Alright, now the orc skin is going to go onto this area. And by the way, uh, these guys from Nolzers are generally uh, pre done, uh, pre primed, so that you don't have to worry about priming it. And this is not a prime main color, this is orc skin. I, I don't have to be too neat with this simply because as we go through and make things better and add more layers to it, um, it will end up being, we'll be able to clean up any messy parts that we have. Okay, so when we go back to our uh, picture, there is some more intense greens uh, along the edges um, and 
and the nooks and crannies. So I'm going to a little bit more, especially on the fringe. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating four different layers because nothing is just one simple color. Except for maybe a wall. Okay, so before we do anything else with this guy, we're going to try to finish up his wings and we are going to use a shadow wash. The great thing about the washes, um, there, there are some people that don't like to use washes. Um, it's a really simple way of getting shadowing, proper shadowing. You've got black wash, or rather shadow wash. There's also a flesh wash and brown wash. And we actually will be using brown wash as well. So, um, Go ahead and go over his wings with the shadow wash. It's already an extremely watery um, dye, as you can see. Okay, his wings aren't too bad looking. We'll go back and touch up as we continue to paint. But next up, we are going to go ahead and hit his belly with the O-Tug Brown, and then claws, and the tips of the wings, and the horns uh, we'll, we'll hit up with bone.
Okay, Miss Hazel, our young black dragon is very nearly done. I think what I'm going to do is go in and add some uh, touch-up details such as highlights um, and make sure that he has been fully covered. But this time, instead of watering it down, I'm actually going to do what's called dry brushing. So when I dry brush, I'm taking a brush, putting some of the paint on it, and then getting as much of the paint off as possible. While still leaving some there. What this does is it adds highlights. And I also want to go against the grain. So all the scales are going one way, all the scales are coming this way, and I'm painting the opposite direction. Okay, I feel good that the dragon is mostly done. We do need to hit him up with um, some gloss and um, it's a varnish that will help protect the paint uh, as he's being handled. But before we do that, while he's drying those last little bits of details that are still dry, we are going to paint his base. Okay, so for this we are going to use Dungeon Stone because it's, well, it's a stone color. Okay, Miss Hazel, I certainly hope that you enjoyed the little lesson on how to uh, paint miniatures. And if you ever want to learn how to paint other kinds, just let me know. Talk to you later. Hopefully I'll see you this summer. Love you. Bye.